the world was against this movie ever getting made. Welcome to Ranger Reviews, the web series where we normally look at episodes of the TV show Power Rangers and then discuss them. Today, however, I wanted to make a separate video discussing all the extra information that's out there on Mighty Morphin Power Rangers the movie, which we just covered on this channel. And because, well, there's a lot of it. If you haven't already, make sure you watch the three parts of the movie overview that were uploaded before this. They're linked in the card above. Somewhere. So, ah, uh, yes. Power Rangers the movie. Let's get the obvious ones out of the way and move on from there. This movie was originally supposed to have Austin St. John, Walter Jones, and Twee Trang starring in it instead of Steve Cardenas, Johnny Young Bosch, and Karen Ashley. As we've discussed before, the characters of Jason, Zack, and Trini were removed from the show suddenly due to behind the scenes turmoil. And this meant that they had to be replaced very quickly as well. In fact, there's even audio that was recorded by the three prior to leaving, promoting the fact that there was about to be a new film. With a big budget feature film release, with a big budget feature film release. With a big budget feature film release. This also made things awkward for the three newbies when they were actually filming it because they hadn't even been introduced on the show proper yet. So if someone saw them filming, people were really confused about who the hell they were. Also, according to the internet back in 1994, on the Alt.Power Rangers Google group, some info had been revealed about the film to the press before they had been introduced into the show and they listed these three newbies as the stars. So people started to assume what was going on, since it had been rumored from the very start that someone from the show was leaving. This film had a real rough time filming. I don't know all the specifics, and honestly, there's so many of them, so I'll just try to keep it as condensed as possible. Long story short, they had a script in hand and ready to go, and they began to film the movie and make rough cuts while they were still filming. The studio, Fox, saw these rough cuts, and they were pissed about how the movie was shaping up to look, demanding reshoots that made the entire production go insanely over schedule. I think they were supposed to film the movie in three months, and instead it ended up lasting about six months, which means that these actors who had moved their lives to Australia were stuck there for a lot longer than anticipated. Because of the reshoots, episodes of season two of Power Rangers had to be shot in Australia, and a lot of episodes that were originally written as two-parters had to be padded out to be three-parters, such as literally every single three-parter in season two, because they needed to deliver a product to the network to get on screen for the children. This is why season two is even messier than usual, because not only did they lose half of their principal cast at the beginning, they then lost all of them, but they still had to get something in the can. One of the ideas that had to be redone was that the Rangers' helmets wouldn't have visors or mouthpieces in them when they were morphed. There's actually some photographic evidence of this out there, and the idea was pretty much to allow the Rangers to be able to emote while even in suit. However, this is something that the studio saw and were like, wait, what the hell? Which means that they had to go back and reshoot literally everything that they had already done this way. The Ooze Men were not originally in the film at all. In fact, they were originally giant rats that the rangers were supposed to fight, which to me is so incredibly lame in comparison to the Ooze Men. They ended up using these rat suits in the Return of the Green Ranger three-parter toward the end of season two, which was one of those ones that was filmed while the cast was in Australia. I mean, these suits look terrible. It's kind of shocking that anyone ever thought that they would be good enough for the silver screen, because they weren't even good enough for television, to be frank. The character of Dulcia was cast, recast, and then given back to the original actress all over again. Gabrielle Fitzpatrick, the woman who played Dulcia in the film, was originally cast as her, but then before production began, they discovered that she had an ovarian cyst, so it obviously made her unable to be able to play the character on screen. They quickly recast, and they actually cast Mariska Hardigay, who is now best known for playing the role of Olivia Benson on NBC's Law & Order Special Victims Unit. She actually filmed pretty much all of Dulcia's scenes with the Rangers, which were different from what we ended up seeing. For example, she trained the Rangers each with special tasks that needed to be completed to be worthy of giving them their ninjetti powers. And she even gave them color-coded cots to sleep on at the ancient temple ruins. Eventually, Gabrielle Fitzpatrick recovered and Mariska Hardigay was fired for whatever reason. And I guess she was just another thing that the studio wasn't crazy about and they had to reshoot literally everything, now trimming the fat off of the original ideas to give us what we got. Dulcia originally had a creature that assisted her as well, named Snoogle. 
He was this elephant slash anteater creature who legitimately shot sugar cubes out of his nose and into tea for the rangers when Dulcia made them tea when they first got to the temple. He seemed to be another character that the studio hated for whatever reason, so they just removed him from the completed film altogether, not even bothering with him in the reshoots as far as I know. It's just a really strange thing that they literally made a character that was never on screen officially. Let's also just make a quick note that he wasn't the only thing just cut out for whatever reason. Ernie was actually supposed to be in this film. Like, they even flew the actor there and everything. Richard Gennell, the actor for Ernie, was present for the entire film and was paid in full for the entire production, despite him not being in the movie at all, nor even getting a credit. They evidently shot some stuff at the juice bar, but it never saw the light of day. Let's talk about Morden, the pig monster with Zed, Rita, and Goldar. We've never seen him before and we'll never see him again. So why is he here and why are we just pretending like it's totally normal? Essentially, Mordant was envisioned as a babu squat finster marriage into a single character. In an earlier draft of the script, he's referred to as Goldar's cousin who is staying with them for whatever reason. Overall, I think I would have preferred that they just added Finster into the film instead, because that would have been a really interesting dynamic to see Finster and Ivan Ooze struggle to have a conversation. The Power Ranger suits were incredibly impractical. Seriously, by the end of the film, as we saw with Aisha's golden medal falling off, that wasn't just a prop accident. These things were literally falling apart and they were meant to look good, not fight, like at all. I mean, the suits were allegedly up to 40 pounds each. The pads and latex started to rip from the stuntmen and women that were just doing their jobs and they had to start to shoot around these things. Nowadays, the suits are actually on display in the United States, with pink and yellow being displayed at the Disney Planet Hollywood Superstore at Lake Buena Vista, Florida, and the six of the other suits being displayed at a Planet Hollywood in New York City. Lastly, someone super important to the franchise auditioned for the role of Dulcia, and while she didn't get it, she would be very well known to all Power Ranger fans later on. Her name is Katherine Sutherland. And while we haven't covered who she plays on the show just yet, just know that she was unsuccessful in getting the role of Dulcia, but she was successful at getting another much bigger role later on for the television series starting in season three of the show. So there you have it, some behind the scenes information on this film from 1995. What do you think would have been the most interesting to actually see on screen? Did you learn anything new or different from this video? Let me know in the comments down below. Until next time though, when we start season three, may the power protect you. Mm -hmm.